Welcome back to another vlog. It's me, Andrea, and it's like one something in the morning, y'all. It's like, oh, I hurt my arm. It's like past one o'clock in the morning. I'm just getting back from a little Valentine's Day celebration with my homegirl from work. She invited me to her house. She had a little um, Valentine's Day thing for Valentine's Day because it is the weekend before Valentine's Day, and I will say, I had such a great time. I don't know if y'all could see in the videos before this, all those little clips. How cute was that? Like the setup. She, this girl hired a chef. She put up all the decorations. She did her thing. Picked out the outfit, sent us the information, and y'all. I inspire to be that level of hosting one day because it was so nice. It was so good. Her house is so beautiful. The food from the chef. Oh, you know what? I meant to get a freaking card for the chef and I forgot it. It's okay. I'm gonna get the information. Anywho, um, I need to clean, get in the shower, wipe this makeup off. I filmed a chit chat get ready with me before I left as I was doing my makeup and stuff like that. And I will say, y'all, look at my makeup. It turned out so good. Like, it's so smooth. I'm pretty sure it's because I've really been taking care of my face skin these days. But it turned out so good. It's so smooth. The color match. Chef's kiss. So, I'm really liking this makeup. Um, but, yeah. This is the aftermath of that. So, mm, I gotta clean. But I'm about to go ahead and do that because, low-key, um, I feel tired. But I already know when... I'm feeling tired, but I already know as soon as I'm done unwinding, getting undressed and stuff like that, I am going to be perfectly fine once I get into bed and I can kind of doom scroll and turn my brain off for the rest of the night. I was thinking if I made it back early enough, I was going to try to study a little bit. I'm still unstudy. I was drinking. Anyway, um, what was I just saying? Hmm. I just realized I still need to put batteries in those lights. Oh, we can distract it again. What was I just saying? Oh, I was saying if I was to make it back early enough, I was going to try to study a little bit more because there was another, there was one more section in my studying that I wanted to get through by the end of today, but I'm thinking I'm just call it. <laughs> I'm just call it and I'm just wake up early in the morning so I can catch up and do that. But yeah, other than that, today, today was a good day today was such a good day y'all I swear those days when like I really don't have much going on more nine times out of ten like I'm at home for the majority of the day and I get to just do something as a highlight of my day that's my ideal day days that are just packed with a bunch of different stuff in them stress me out but if I can have like a nice cool calm collected day but there's one activity that's kind of like the highlight of the day that's my speed that is my speed. Not going to brunch in the morning and then like breakfast in the morning, maybe brunch, maybe some type of outing, then maybe something else. And then at night going out like I can do it. Don't get me wrong. I'll do it. But my ideal day is being able to chill. Like let's either go to like some brunch in the morning and then I get to chill the rest of the day. Maybe do something slow later that night vice versa but yes but yeah I think that's why today was so good I didn't have much going on I made some breakfast I cleaned a little bit I studied then I started getting ready got a chance to film a few videos obviously I was hanging with Trey boom had a bomb time tonight at the Galentine's Day thing and now I'm back home perfect done perfect day but yeah let me go ahead and take off this makeup room well actually I'm gonna clean first 
I'm going to clean first and then I'm going to take off my makeup. But let me show y'all this real quick. I bought my, what are we looking at? Why do you look so, what are you doing? Anyway, I bought my balloon, y'all. Listen, attention to detail. I'm telling you right now, leave it to a female to have attention to detail because everybody she invited, she bought a balloon. And this is my balloon. And look at that. She put pictures of everybody that she invited on the balloons. It's so cute. And this is one of my favorite pictures of myself. <sighs> I hear a whole lot of hopping going on down here. The what? I hear a whole lot of hopping going on down here. What's going on? What's going on? I follow my lip, bro. <laughs> you having fun? Some little, some little sticky stuff on your lip. On my lip gloss. Gross. You live. Uh uh. Contaminated now. Whatever. Say goodnight to them. I'm about to go and wipe off my makeup. Good night. Enjoy. Have fun. Go sleep. Go sleep. You go to sleep. <laughs> I'm older. He was living his best life, y'all. It was so funny because earlier today, I thought I was going to be running too late to even try to make it. And he, he literally said, girl, you better get up and you better go. Which I'm super excited. He kind of like pushed me to do that. I know I wanted to go anyway. I don't know, but it's something about showing up lately like that but oh no oh god oh man i might be tired for real hold on all in all it turned out okay let's see i'm gonna need these i'm gonna need that y'all now i'm just trying to put everything away oh man Okay, let me be careful. Why am I slamming my makeup down like this? Mm -hmm. um, I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Let me see. Where's my phone? Y'all know when you leave somebody and they be like, okay, text me when you get home so I can know you made it safe. I'm that friend that forget. I've been here for what? Maybe almost a little over 30 minutes and I'm just not texting. I made it because I just remember... <laughs> I don't do it on purpose, I promise, but I be having so many things once I get to the house. Anyway, I'm about to go ahead and take off this makeup. Y'all, I'm just very impressed with this application today. It just looks so good. It looks so soft, like it don't look cakey. This is the first time I feel like I've done my makeup and it looks this nice. I'm so happy. I know how to do my makeup. I, look, my makeup. I'm not a makeup artist now. I don't want to be a disrespectful. But I think this is good. I could have done my eyeshadow a little bit better. But yeah, all in all, I like this. I don't even want to wipe it off. Anyway, I'm going to start off taking my ear cuffs off. So these seconds. Do you see that? ear cuffs and I honestly want more because I kind of want some to go like down without having to pierce my ear but I love these little ear cuffs things so I think these are like $40 or something like that at the PX I'm gonna take my earrings off as well oh <sighs> these were kind of expensive too that's why I would be so mad if that fell down a drain. They're just these chunky, hold on. Just these chunky earrings. They're super small and I like them so much. Oh, I gotta take this ponytail out because it is so tight. I'm gonna just loosen this. I don't wanna take, yeah, I'm gonna just take it out. Oh. Uh, if my hair is still wet, mm, I'm about to put a bonnet on anyway. So, so when I'm taking off my makeup, I always start with, um, hold on y'all, this, this feels gross. I gotta, ugh. 
it's so wet here it's kind of touching my neck a little <laughs> there we go um anyway when i start taking my makeup off i usually start with my eyes and i use this neutrogena um oil free makeup remover and i use the little white pad And then I sit it there, I hold it for a little bit, and then wipe it off, and it usually works absolute wonders. Anyway, let's start talking about tonight, y'all. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I went to this party. I'm so glad she invited me because I, one, they were so fun. It was such a good group of girls, like some of them in the military, some of them not. Everybody have a lot of good things going on for themselves. Just all, all of them were just, it was a bunch of black, outstanding women. I'm so glad I went because I keep telling myself, and y'all know, because I've mentioned it so many times in so many of my blogs, I've been wanting to be around a bunch of, oh, that hurts, a bunch of uplifting you know forward driven motivated black women and that's what I was surrounded by tonight and it was crazy it was so fun such a good group of girls and they were so hold on y'all they were all so nice they were all so sweet funny and just gorgeous like y'all saw those clips did y'all see those women in those videos they were gorgeous <laughs> And so it was just such a good night. What am I doing? Is that my baby? Mm-hmm. You said what? You just know you're doing stuff. <laughs> Were you down there naked? Yep, just having a great time. How did I not notice? I don't know, you know. Were you covered? Yeah, my blanket. Wow. Oh. And my blanket. Wow. Well, it covered though. I mean, It'd be your own people. You know what I'm <laughs> oh God, he's so slow. Y'all, Trey got surgery on his foot, and so he's literally hopping around on one leg. And I kid you not, listen, he is a man's man. He is a man for his wife because even with him just having surgery he's still <laughs> hopping around trying to do all these things for me cleaning my car taking out the trash just doing stuff and it just makes me feel so good that he wants to provide and do these things for me but baby sit down take a seat come down i got it you just had surgery but i didn't know he was naked downstairs and he just hopped up here swinging and bouncing around oh gosh i'm about to go downstairs but i feel like i have something in my eye um, anyway, where was I at? Oh, my ears are ringing. Ah! All right, so to take off my ring, and I gotta roll up my sleeves because it is time to take the makeup off my face now that all of the makeup is off my eyes. And that be working so good. I love how good that works. But I'm gonna be using this Take Off the Day by Clinique, and it's just a bomb. Actually, oh, I still have a sample. So. It's just this balm here and this is what it looks like on the inside. I actually have some samples because when I tried my first sample, I just loved it so much. I went back and got the big one that I just remembered. Where is it? So I ended up getting these two samples. I used out of this one already and all you need is like a little piece. It's like butter. You just literally need a little piece. I'm going to show y'all. You just need a little piece of this. You kind of wipe, wipe it on your face. It's like a butter and it just melts everything off. So good. And then I go in and wipe that off with a paper towel. Like rinse it off and wipe it off with a paper towel. And it's just so good. So I get some in my hand like that. Like that much is perfect. It's probably a little blurry, but that much is perfect. So that much like that is perfect. And I literally rub it on my hands like this. Oh, geez. And I just rub it in like that. Mm. And when I 
I say this melts the makeup off so good. Like I've used things before, obviously the makeup wise makeup remover, but this is so good. All right, and I'm gonna wipe this off. minimal makeup mainly like in my hairline and stuff like that now I'm gonna go ahead and get my um, face wipes let me let me clean as I go my wipes here and let me show y'all what I do when I wear make like anytime I wear makeup I always put a mask of the Clarisil on my face and go sleep in it because again my face is really sensitive and I'm very prone to breaking out you can't tell but when I say I'm so lucky to be broken out this time in my eyebrow it's crazy but yeah I'm just broken out my eyebrow like I still I don't know if you can see that but like I have a bump like in here, right here, right here. I did have one right here. It's kind of peeling now, but yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and go on my wipes. Wipe my face. I should take care of the rest of the makeup. And I usually wipe my face until this wipe looks clean. Like as I wipe, I use as many as I need to until I wipe and there's really nothing there. Oh, jeez, that burns. Okay, that is my face clean. <laughs> Almost done, babe. I want to lay down and do a scroll. But that is my face clean. And as far as the cast that I put on my face after I wore makeup, because again, my face is sensitive. And I'm trying my hardest to avoid breakouts. Like these breakouts will be all over my face. So I'm going to take this and I just put like a, like a, like a thin layer of this over my face. It looks a little ashy, a little ghosty, like if you were to put on a mineral sunscreen, but it's fine. It works. Don't it, babe? These socks, bro. So what? Funny. <laughs> what are my socks? These are. You don't know what I'm about. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, They're cute. <laughs> Cute. Mm -hmm. they, they look creepy. <laughs> creepy socks. Creepy loves phalange socks. Graham didn't like them either. He said he couldn't imagine his toes in them. I said, they'll just look like cute little fat sausages. He's like, no, you're making it so much worse. Yeah, that's definitely worse. <laughs> They're cute. Mm -mm. Yes, they are. Yeah, no part of that foolishness. What? I was like, oh my god, those are so cute. They'd be lying to people. <laughs> Instagram said they were cute. I bet Instagram did. And the internet can't lie. Oh, yeah? They're not allowed to lie. <laughs> you can't lie on the internet. Of course, I was.
So sexy. She said, depending on how it looks, like the healing looks when oh, I go yeah. in. Or in the 15th, 15th? 16th. Depending on how it looks. Yeah. Depending on how the other guy go. Yeah. And I'm going to just put some thick globs over these because when I say them things was hurting I'm tempted to touch them they're literally in my eyebrows I'll break out this time just can't let me be dirty can't let me live my life and because now I'm feeling very not cute with this stuff on my face I'm going to throw some earrings on you know what it's necessary all you gotta do is splash some water, just splish, splish, and you'll be done. What do you mean? I gotta sleep in this. Too easy. For me, I'm saying. Oh, for you. Oh, uh uh. -huh. Mm -hmm. You think you're better than me? What the hell? Why can't I get this earring in? That was crazy. You think you're better than me? Mm -hmm. My big stick, though. Did I put it in my makeup bag? Oh, yeah, that way. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, so you're trying to hide it from me now. That's crazy. No, I didn't even mean to put it I in there. It, I use it one time. <laughs> and then the get, get mistakenly put in different places. That's Shut crazy. up. I'm talking about my big aqua force stick. I think my, my hose probably fighting yes. with me. Here we go. Do you have like other back pieces? Um, like There's some at the house. I mean, I have my little jewelry thing over there. You don't know what you got in there? That's crazy. I wonder whatever happened to the back pieces to those. I lost them. How'd you lose them? Uh, I don't know. I laid in them one time and I woke up and they wasn't there anymore. <laughs> oh gosh, you can see my hue so much better from this direction. Look at me. That big old head, bro. <laughs> that knocked me out. Yeah. But that's it, y'all. We about to go to bed for tonight. I'm gonna pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, slut. Go put on a turtleneck. Mm, funny. <laughs> I'm going to pick y'all back up tomorrow. We about to chill in the bed. Chill. I'm about to go to sleep. About to chill in the bed. It's about to be 2 o'clock in the morning. You about to go to well, sleep. Them little night riders, bro. They be out here in the streets running. <laughs> I'm you... not for me anymore. Oh, yeah? Mm -mm. The streets ain't for you no more? I would have been knocked out. He wasn't out. I would have been asleep, bro. The, the streets on a block list. Yeah, I don't know people either anymore. I'm about the doom scroll. He's about to go to sleep. I knew it. It happens every time. Every single time I get in the bed. Like, you know when you're like up and you're tired? Or like when you're out and you're tired and all of a sudden you get in the bed and you're like not tired no more? Mm-mm. If I get in my bed, I'm out, bro. No, I'm not tired no more. If I come upstairs, it's a wrap. I mean, I'm sure if I close my eyes, I can go to sleep. But yeah, we're going to see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Peace. No, thank you. All right. I'm going to take uh, two of your hash browns and a small orange juice, please. Okay, we have? No, thank you. All right. Thank you. Hey, my battle bays. Welcome back. It is a few days later, and I'm at work. It's a Monday. I'm at work, and, um, yeah i didn't pick up this camera yesterday at all when i said i was going to so i'm sorry about that but anyway yeah today's monday i just pulled up to the hospital getting ready to walk inside i only work well i've been on a monday through friday schedule so i've been working eight hours instead of being on shift working my 12 hour shifts hopefully if trey gets here like stationed here um, that changes because I really miss being on shift work. I really miss my shifts. I like having days off within the week. So yeah, but other than that, my Monday through schedule, my mon Monday through Friday schedule hasn't been that bad because it's kind of like been helping with like my appointments and stuff like that. But yeah, I stopped at McDonald's this morning to grab my hash browns and, um, 
orange juice because I think that's what I'm gonna go back to. I'm gonna go back to the basics. Since I haven't been doing that well, what do you do? You go back to the basics, you figure that whole thing out because that's kind of like my base, that's my foundation. So when I'm kind of all over the place, I just go back to base, get myself together, and then I can kind of like have breakfast here, have breakfast there, do these different things. So yeah, it is 0638 and I'm about to go ahead and walk inside because I have to be getting getting ready to get report by 0645 but yeah i got this trash out of my car and you know i still i'm still carrying my giant backpack because as y'all know i'm studying for the tmc again so yeah but i'm gonna see y'all later though quick update still at work doing a little bit of studying still i just finished up some rounds checking on some patients um moving some equipment and stuff like that around and i just got me some food y'all this chicken philly look at that it looks so good um we just got a um, trauma call down in the ER so I'm about to go ahead and head down there they said ET 10 minutes and I was like a minute ago so I'm about to go ahead and head down there real quick I just wanted to grab something to eat because I'm so hungry so if your person weighs 60 kilograms then you're gonna go six to eight that is a must-have implement right off the bat for every single mechanical delay patient Okay, so we give you an example here. Hey, my battle face, what's up? It is Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday morning. It's February 13th. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Y'all, hold on. I'm flustered. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm running a little bit late because I that's just has a point. I'm running a little bit late. So, what? Hold on. Why is this all the way over there? Who? That was so weird. Okay, anyway. Um, I'm running a little bit late. I'm about to hurry up and head to work. I had to go and grab meds. Um, I had to go and grab meds because I woke up with the worst tooth pain this morning, the worst migraine this morning, and I usually have some Toradol that I can take real quick. I ran out, tried to go to sick call to get a refill. Apparently, I can't do that there, so I have to go and make an appointment with my doctor to get a refill. That's the reason I'm late. I had to come back home because I forgot my ID. The only reason why they let me on post was because I'm like, please, I have to go to the hospital. I'm like in so much pain, and they finally let me go, but... um yes i am about to be heading to work it is 7 28 and i'm trying to hurry up because oh sheesh hold on y'all hold on hold on hold on anywho i'm trying to hurry up because first rounds start at eight o'clock obviously and so i kind of want to be there to do the first rounds i think um what is that noise I think I'm gonna be okay let me just I can text my homegirl to see if she's in the ICU today because if she's in the ICU then I'm just gonna let her know like hey I'm on my way there now I got first rounds I got it because y'all I really I'm trying my hardest to get as much experience as I can because I really do love my job I really do love what I'm doing and now that my job is coming to an end I'm kind of hoping to get like at least a little part-time job here or something like that once I get out so we're gonna see how that works so I'm just trying my hardest to like <laughs> learn all the ins and the outs and get as much experience that I can that way I can be more independent on the floor to make people want to hire me in the first place Oh, but yeah, I'm about to go ahead and go in. Obviously, today is another eight-hour shift because I'm working Monday through Friday right now. And yeah, um, yesterday though, y'all, yesterday was such a good work day. Um, I basically took the ICU by myself and I was so excited. Nothing was really going on. It was a high flow, a few medications, but other than that, nothing too crazy. But it's just the fact that I was able to do it by myself and I was confident enough to do that by myself. Um, 
Yes, and then after I was leaving work, I got a phone call from HRC basically asking me to verify me and Trey's marriage. Like, he's like, I don't know. So, when Ipse came out, all my records and stuff got messed up in iPerms and stuff like that. So, like, my marriage certificates with the kids, like, basically my ex, I was, I've been in Nons for quite some time. But for whatever reason, when Ipse happened, all of that stuff appeared back in my iPerms as if I was still married to him. Um, all of my kids stuff somehow left Ipse as if I was just married with no kids. It was really weird. So I guess he went when we, me and we, hey, my battle bays. I'm so sorry. I just realized I be talking to this camera as if I'm talking to everybody that is military. So let me break it down a little bit. HRC is basically our headquarters. So our HR, they're the individuals that tell us what we're doing, where we're going, what we get, things like that. Cool. Now, when it comes to Ipse, Ipse is our link between ourselves and HRC or our immediate chain of command. And that's where we go to check our profile status, check and see if we got orders, check and see um, what is it like any type of correspondence between us and our chain of command. That's where we go to request vacation, things like that. When it comes to IPERMs, that's where we keep all of our documentation. So our administrative stuff, so our marriage certificates, birth certificates, our orders, promotion orders, certificate of completion if you went to any schools, um, things like that, contracts, stuff like that. Now, when it comes to compassionate reassignment, that's just the active duties way of going to our bosses and saying, hey, my family member is going through this over here and it's usually health related. Can you please station me a little bit closer so I can be a better help to them? Cool. And then when it comes to MACP, MACP is just a dual military program. So if both spouse and wife, if both husband and wife is in the military and you guys are stationed super far away, you can join MACP, ask to be stationed together, and basically they'll try to see what it is that they can do. Hope that helps. Trey submitted a compassionate reassignment to try to get here and they finally have it. And so they reached out, they're like, hey, you know, I'm working on this case, but I'm trying to verify if you guys are even still married because when I went in, I saw that you guys enrolled in MACP, but I just went to verify and it's I don't see you guys enrolled anymore. And I'm like, well, that's really weird because we're definitely still married. He's like, yeah, because on my end, I'm reading that you're annulled. I'm like, from my ex, me and Trace, we're, we're, we better still be married. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he's basically like, no, I just wanted to verify. I want to make sure I'm not sending someone to you that you don't even want to be there and stuff like that. And so I was just so excited about that phone call. And I'm hoping that mean good news i hope that means trey is about to be like coming here they're about to be breaking him off some orders to send him here soon because that's what i've been waiting i've been waiting for that so yeah right now i'm stopping at mcdonald's so i can grab me uh my hash browns and my orange juice and then be on my way to the hospital that's correct i really love my job I really do love my job. Just like any job, there's things that can suck about it. But as far as my job, it's so fulfilling and rewarding. And the fact that I'm actually feeling confident is what I love. Before I even reclassed, I, so for those of you that don't know, I am an LPN and I'm a res respiratory therapist. I started off as an LPN. These are all the jobs I've had in the military. I came in as a Seaburn soldier. I reclassed to 68 Charlie, which is an LPN. And then I reclassed again to 68 Victor, which is my current job, a respiratory therapist. Hold on, y'all. Let me order my food. Can I have my donuts? Do you want today? No, thank you. Can I order whenever you're ready? I'm going to take two hash browns and a, a, a medium orange juice, please. That's it? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Ooh, it's so windy. It's so windy. Oh, yesterday, y'all, I accidentally bought a freaking Vocera home. So I guess I got a Vocera as soon as I walked through the door in the hospital. <laughs> but um, I was about to say, yeah, so one of the reasons I wanted to reclass, right? There, there's there's a few reasons. The reason I became a respiratory therapy, a ther the reason I became a respiratory therapist was because one so when I became a LPN I was super proud and I'm still super proud to be an LPN but working in the hospital with the nurses they hold on y'all 
I'm so sorry. I'm all over the place. I'm trying. I'm trying. Anyway, working with the other nurses, and when I say other nurses, I mean RNs, they weren't nice to us. People do not understand. I can't emphasize how not nice to us these some of these RNs were. Good morning. Good morning. Great. How are you? Good morning. Great. How are you? Thank you so much. You too. Um, where is my badge? Where is my badge? Come on, here, Hi, no. <laughs> Thank That's you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. One thing about it, they gonna know I'm getting some hash browns if I'm coming through this damn drive-thru. Anyway, so, um, yes, when I was working in one, I didn't start off in a hospital. When I got to my first duty station, which was here as a 68 Charlie and LPM, I was down on the line unit. So I wasn't doing anything nursing related whatsoever. Like I wasn't in the hospitals. I wasn't doing patient care. I just did not know what I was doing. I had no faith in my abilities to like care for patients at all. When I finally got a chance to go up to the hospital, I was there for about three months and they were just so mean like i do not understand why the nurses up there were so mean and it was so it was it was a pretty disgusting display because i later on found out that the floor what is it the floor now i'm not a rude person i'm not disrespectful but i am very stern in when i speak when it comes to certain things and i'm very i don't want to say outspoken but I articulate myself well enough to advocate for myself well enough at this point in my life. And so, um, I'm gonna open this. And so, when that would happen, like, it, it would be little things. And I, I explained this a little bit before. Some of the second lieutenants would be talking so badly about the soldiers down at the line units. They would be talking so badly about these soldiers. And I couldn't help but to say anything. They would talk about things like, how when they go through the gate it's so i don't want to put on my uniform because oh my gosh i'm gonna have to salute when i go down to the company i don't even salute them back when they salute me at the gate i'm talking people that's barely been in the military for six months y'all so with that being said it would piss me off because i'm like wait what you do realize it's in the damn regulation that when the rent when a salute is rendered you render one back it doesn't make any sense and they're not saluting you to be corny common customs and courtesies they're doing what they're supposed to do because they're respecting your rank not you as a person they're respecting your rank and my thing is i've done that plenty of times even with ncos i will respect your rank all day long but you as a person i can hate your damn guts but because i know you outrank me. I love the army. I love the organization. I love the the organ like the organization within the organization. We have rules, so I'm going to respect your rank. Period. I don't have to like you. That's all they are doing. So when they say that like soldiers are being corny and stuff like that, when they come up, it was just weird. Then they would talk about how if they go out, that one everybody wanted to get out of the hospital. I worked in med surge. It was a horrible floor. Um, everybody wanted to get out of the hospital so bad, so they were all trying to hurry up and be XOs. But then they would talk about how, oh yeah, if I go out to the field, I'm not going to stay out there because one of their friends, which just so happened to be my old commander she ended up getting out of the hospital she became a commander and i guess she will report back or she's talking to her old friends obviously and she's telling them how yeah i don't stay out there in the field they stay out there in the field but i don't stay out there in the field so they would literally be like oh yeah because so and so said she don't even stay out in the field so i'm not going to stay out in the field i'm not going to do that so not only are you talking badly about soldiers you want to go down and be an xo you need to like am i crazy like you need to be that voice for soldiers like how how do you not like soldiers because you think you're so much better than them you can't even stay out in a damn field problem for two weeks at a time with them but you expect them to trust you and come to you about stuff and i just could not keep my mouth closed y'all i wasn't being rude i wasn't being disrespectful but i could not keep my mouth closed I would low key be checking them because before, not even low key, I would high key be checking them because before the regulation changed, 
you have um like we can wear earrings and stuff now that's something that changed when i was still in school so that wasn't the issue the issue was you have these second lieutenants first lieutenants at the end of the day yes we're in scrubs but we are still in uniform so they're walking around with tongue piercings nose piercings like big hoop earrings and it was crazy and i'm like ma'am Did the regulation change that way? Like, it was crazy. So then they they started calling down to my, my command, basically saying that I'm causing issues, I'm causing problems and stuff like that. They would call me Andrea and I would ask, can you just call me Sergeant Starks? Because obviously I was Sergeant Starks at the time. I just got married and I was Sergeant Augustine, but I would say, call me Sergeant Starks. No, we don't do that up here. I don't care what you do up here, but you're gonna address me by my rank and by my name. You, I have soldiers that's in my unit that's underneath me in this hospital working right now. So what favors am I doing by letting them break customs, you know, common customs and courtesies by calling me by my first name? Then we, we get down to the unit. You think it's okay to do that? No, no. Let's, let's do things the right way. Let's be professional. So on the military side of things, it made nursing not so good for me. Then on the nursing side of things, it made nursing not so good for me because being an LPN, here I am, I'm working my 12 hour shifts, right? I'm working my 12 hour shifts. I'm taking my four to five patients at a time. I'm, I'm, I literally had my first cold on that floor. We're doing chest compressions and stuff together. You know, we're doing all of this stuff together. Yet when it's all said and done, you still felt the need or you still felt that you were in the right to talk down and look down on me because I'm an LPN and not RPN. I'm a licensed nurse, not a registered nurse. And I just could not take that disrespect. So my other thing was, again, and this is just the army side of things. When I finally had left the hospital, I have myself, I have other LPNs underneath me. And when things would happen like at the hospital. So if you don't know, soldiers are up for everything first. So we ended up having snow um, when I was back here um, in North Carolina. And some of the civilians, a lot of the civilians ended up calling off because it was too dangerous for them to come in. It's too dangerous for the civilians to come in, but you have soldiers that's living 30, 30 minutes, 45 minutes away. It's not too dangerous for them to come in. And I'm talking civilians. Some of them was living on post, the same post of the hospital, and they were calling off because it was too dangerous to come in. But you want these soldiers to come in from 30, 45 minutes away. Me, I was a 30 minute drive in. You want us to drive in in the snow. It's not too dangerous for us. You, you, you don't care about us losing, our families losing. Like, it didn't make sense to me, and I thought it was so backwards. Not only that, when we have to come in, it'll just be, it'll be out of nowhere. It'll be a random call on a Saturday morning, like, uh, hey, Sergeant Starks, I need two of your Charlies because we had these many people call out today. Hey, Sergeant Starks, I need three of your Charlies because we need them on this detail here at this place because blah, blah, blah. They don't even have experience to do these things. Like you're trying to take my Charlies, throw them in positions that's gonna put their license in jeopardy. And it didn't seem like leadership cared about that. We do, we were not getting enough education. We were not getting enough experience to be getting thrown in these places the way we were getting thrown in these places. For example, I had never worked in a step down unit. Why am I being placed in a step down unit to take care of patients solo by myself without preceptorship, without anything. That's dangerous, not only for my license, but that's dangerous for the patients. I've never worked in the, um, at this point I had never worked in psychiat the, the psychiatric ward on a sixth floor before. So why am I being thrown in this position to be taking care of patients that I'm pretty sure I need some extra type of training to deal with these certain things. You get what I'm saying? So I was never confident in myself. I was never confident in my ability when I have to go to the hospital being an LPN, being a nurse. One, because there was no, there was preceptorship, but there was no mentorship. And when I say this preceptorship, they were literally, they, I didn't get precepted. They were literally trying their hardest to match me with any black nurse that was on the floor. And I later found out that was because they felt like, because I was so articulate, I was so outspoken, um, they put me with the black nurses because they felt like the black nurses could handle me and i didn't understand i didn't think i did i didn't know i was an animal that needed to be handled but that's how the things went for me this was just my experience so when i ended up um 
I would see the respiratory therapist come on the floor. And it's so crazy, y'all, because one of the respiratory therapists that still work here, I remember him and he's one of the reasons I'm like, maybe I should do that job. Because every single time we would have to call a rapid, every time we would have to call a cold blue, they're coming onto the floor and they're like so confident in themselves. They're just walking with their heads high. And I just, and they always came as a team as a team and I love that. And so when they were when they were individual just doing medication, I would I would be in there with my patient because every time I see anybody walk in the room with my patient, I want to go and just see what's going on. And just so happened one of the people that I'm working with now, he worked in a hospital back then and he would always teach me about certain things like this is how you administer this just in case, you know, you need to or whatever the case may be. He would just be so nice and so like that mentorship, that preceptorship that I wanted, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should give that a chance. Maybe I should do that. And another thing is when you're a nurse, you have to be a jack of all trades. And I wasn't confident in being able to do that, especially in the military. Being a respiratory therapist, I knew it was so specialized that that's something that I would be, I would be able to hone my skills on what it is that I needed to know in my part of getting the patient better, right? I hope I'm making sense, I really do. And that's what I ended up doing. And when I say that is literally what I got. Like, that's what I got. I felt confident in my ability, even even a little bit, but I never felt a little confident as an LPN. I even felt a little confident that if some shit go down and I'm by myself, I can hold my own for a little bit until somebody comes. You get what I'm saying? As an LPN, I would have broken a pressure immediately because what the fuck do I do, you know? So, yes, I. this is why I love this job because here I am thinking like, I'm like, I want something. Like, I want something and i finally got it so let me go ahead and eat my hash browns drink my orange juice and get to this job oh and let me call my home girl and let her know i'm on my yeah it is after work let me take this off goodness gracious Woo! first of all i'm just realizing i have putty on my key i gotta throw this out do I need to get, why am I not starting my car? Hold on, let me just get my life together. Okay, so I'm just getting off of work. It is 15 11 and your girl about to head home, but first I'm about to go to the commissary. Hold on, let me put this back in pause. Let me make sure I know exactly what I'm going to get from there. Would it even be at the commissary? No, it would not, so. Sephora? Where's my phone? I know I'm not tripping. Hold on, y'all. Where in the world is my phone? I know. Please don't tell me I done left my phone sitting up here. Because I don't want to go back up there to get... What the hell? What? Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Cause where's my phone? Oh my goodness. Okay, did I stick it in here maybe? No. Did I? Okay, when I grab Y'all, I think I left my phone upstairs in the hospital. Okay, y'all. I got it. Pissed myself off. Had to run all the way up there. Anyway, um, I'm about to go ahead and run to Sephora real quick. But first, I'm about to call Trey and see if he needs me to pick up anything before I get back home. But yeah, today was uneventful. Like nothing. I don't want to say the word. But when I say I, I studied for eight hours. I literally studied for eight straight hours. Obviously, I'm taking breaks and stuff in between. Like I got a quick little nap in. I went and got lunch. Like it was, it was very, very, it was a good day. It was a good day. Tell me how to touch a signal. It was about five minutes ago. When I seen a hot chick that a young and never seen before. I say, yo, tell the girls I'm gonna meet up. On second time, that ain't the way to go. I gotta do a game.